Hello everyone, my car is obviously loud, as you can tell from my videos. And I want to do something about that. Aside from the fact that a 4mm firewall is the only thing separating me and the engine, I think that something can be done about reducing not only the sound in the cabin, but also the heat and vibrations that come from right behind me. It's possible that the entire firewall is resonating, but I can't be completely sure about what the main source of the sound is, so I want to try to insulate the firewall and the surrounding panels with some Dyna liner. My expectations are that there will be a somewhat noticeable reduction in sound, but not so much that it'll surprise me. To quantify this test, I'll be using this decibel meter to measure the intensity in both cases, and conveniently, I can place it right here in this cup holder, which happens to be at almost the exact distance from the firewall that my ear is. To prevent incorrect measurements, I'll suspend this device by wrapping it in some foam in case the vibrations do affect the readings. I don't expect a lot of the vibrations to seize, as those could be coming from the mounts if they are bad. As for the temperature on the firewall, which I have felt to be noticeably reduced, I'll only be able to provide a measurement after the installation, as I kind of forgot to take the reading before the installation. To remove the plastic panels, you first need to remove the two door thingies. I don't have them installed as I see no point to them, but it's just a few 10mm screws. I'm going to inspect the area to make sure that I don't have any rust or anything damaged. Sure enough, there is a leak where water has been accumulating and has rusted away a hole into the body. The leak came from a small rip in the funnel that gathers water from the soft top edge, and I seal it up with a small amount of gasket maker I have. After a heavy rainfall, I couldn't find a drop of water anywhere. The evap shield was also rusty on the edges, so I removed it, sanded it, and hit it with some primer. To fix this rust hole, I had to cut away around it and used a mesh along with some fiberglass filler to seal it up. It took some sanding, but it seems nicely patched up, as I made sure that the surrounding material didn't have any rust hidden underneath it. After driving the car before and after I repaired the holes, with the covers removed in both cases, I didn't really notice any difference in sound intensity. I'm choosing Dyna Liner because of three main reasons. Firstly, I think it's possible that the foam can perform almost as well as some of the rubber dampening materials out there, since it'll be squished between the firewall and the plastic covers, which should prevent a lot of resonance. The second is the cost. I'm not completely sure where to eliminate most of the noise from, so if I experiment with this much cheaper foam and the results aren't that great, I won't be sad about it. Lastly, I don't want to just stick some heavy rubber lining everywhere and call it a day. I want to quantify the performance of this foam. There doesn't seem to be as much testing on closed cell foam compared to Dynamat or other rubber compounds, so it should be fun testing this out and learning from the results. What I like about this material so far is that it's very light, with 12 square foot weighing about a kilo. The adhesive backing is very sticky and should be able to handle the heat coming from the firewall and not gum up. It's surprisingly pliable, but unless you use a very sharp knife, it's very tough to cut through. I plan to cover most, if not all, of the surfaces behind me, and I think it might take the entire 2.5 by 4.5 foot roll. To save material from being scrapped, I try to use up the edge pieces that would be left over before moving on to bigger cuts, even though it's tempting to inefficiently cut the measurements out. I end up using the whole roll, and I think I only threw out about a square inch. This foam is about 1cm thick, but the plastic covers on top of it were just able to fit back on, which is what I wanted so that there could be possibly less resonance. After reassembling the covers, I'm going to perform the same test I did previously without the foam. The first one is a cold start, the second is a high RPM acceleration, third is a 2000 RPM cruise, and the last one is a warm idle. I wanted to include a few more tests, but it was difficult to collect similar data. Here are the results of the pre-installation. And post-installation. To quantify this data, I plotted the comparisons in Excel. The data shows roughly 2 decibel difference at cold start, but the other tests had less of a difference, so it's hard to tell the change in intensity was due to outside factors. For the acceleration test, the sampling rate didn't allow enough data points to be collected. I should have done a slow ramp up through the RPMs instead. The cold start was also done with a roof above, compared to the second test which was in my driveway. It may seem like this would make a big difference in the interior sound intensity, 
but the stock muffler is really quiet on the outside and even then there was a big wall beside the car in both scenarios. So those are the quantitative results. In hindsight, I should have found an isolated road to do these tests to get more accurate data. More data points should also have been collected. But aside from that, I would say that I do feel a difference that the camera can't really pick up. After going on several trips, I feel like I can tell the difference in overall sound dampening. The noise is more muffled in general, and there's a slight reduction in the intensity. And this gives me a bit more confidence in pushing the car to its limit. It's as if you shoved a giant blanket right behind you. Before the installation, I was able to feel some heat radiating from the firewall if I were to get my hand about 2 inches away from it. It was at about, I'd say, 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. As for the temperature measurement after the installation, I got a reading of about 55 degrees Celsius. This was after a 10 minute drive and the car was warmed up. There is noticeably less heat radiating from the firewall, especially after a 3000 RPM 10 minute highway drive. The firewall from the engine side is at about 90 to 100 degrees, so there is a good amount of insulation happening, and I'm pretty sure the plastic covers have little to do with that. Remember, the firewall is only about 4 millimeters thick. I'm just surprised how well the foam did insulate against the heat. Overall, it's hard to say whether this specific foam is the best option. In my specific case, it's possible that most of the vibrations are coming from the old mounts, so that just leaves the heat and the sound to be improved. The heat has been noticeably improved, and the sound has been improved a small amount, so now it feels better to drive without hearing every little squeak in the engine bay. If I were to insulate this car all over again, I think I'd try to use some thin rubber dampening material on the firewall, and then put some dyna liner over it to get the best of both worlds. For me, however, I'm mostly happy with how this foam performed, and I don't regret buying it. As I mentioned in the beginning, I didn't expect it to outperform all those other rubber dampening compounds, but it did certainly make a difference in the right quality, and all for less than $100. Well, that's it for this video. If you may have noticed, my transmission is making some unfriendly sounds, and I know that it's coming from the input shaft bearing that I should have replaced a year ago. If only I knew back then. That's for next time. Thanks for watching. Thin rubber dampening material on the firewall. Thin rubber dampening material on the... It did certainly make a difference in the... But it did certainly... Beef.